So at point five, we know that P underscore five is equal to the condenser pressure P9. Here we specify our units. And we know that the entropy at point five will be equal to the entropy at point four. Because that's an isentropic process. So the entropy at this point will be equal to the entropy at, the, at point four. So let's specify the unit. Then we have joule per kilogram Kelvin. Next, we can find the temperature at point five. So the temperature at point five will be since we know the pressure and the and the entropy going back to this plot we know the pressure we know the entropy and we know that the fluid is at its gas phase here and is superheated so we need to specify that so all i need to do now is to come here and say copy this one and paste it here so here we know we know our entropy, so I'll change this to S and this becomes S5. And then we know our pressure, but the pressure at this point is gas. So you have to specify that in the Munich's in um, for Cooper to pick that up. And that pressure is P underscore five. With this in mind, we can now calculate for H underscore 5, which will be equal, let me copy this, and I paste it quickly. I change this to H. I do the same for density. So we could do the density is equals so I change this to D now we can specify the units this is Kelvin this is Joe per kilogram and this is kilogram per, per meter cube Again, we know that the mass flow at 0.5 is, is equal to the mass flow at 0.4. So we come here now. Next time, we need to find 0.8. This is where the mixture takes place. So both the saturated liquid and the stream from the saturated vapor is mixed in here. So we go to 0.8. So again, I know that at point eight, P underscore eight is equals to P underscore nine, which is a condenser pressure. And then I can find the enthalpy as a result of this mixture. I can find the enthalpy as a result of this mixture. So which will be H underscore eight equals so we have the the mass flow at point at point five multiplied by the mass flow sorry multiply by the enthalpy at point five plus the mass flow at point six not point six, I beg your pardon, point seven multiply by the enthalpy at point seven, all divided by the mass flow of point nine or the fluid coming in. So let me call it to be the mass flow mass underscore F. So this is our H eight. 
Again, with our P8 and, and H8, we can also find what the mixture quality is if we care about that. So we could say Q underscore 8 is equals. So again, if I look here at this point, it's going to be a mixture of the two phase. So I'll come here and take off the one for the two phase that I have here, cap it. Then I come down and I paste it. So my H becomes H underscore eight is a two phase and my P becomes P underscore eight. Again, we specify the unit. This is Pascal. This joule per kilogram. This is kilogram per second. So we cannot do this for a entropy. So we call this x underscore eight. I can just copy this, paste it here, call this S. And then we know that our mass flow at point eight M underscore eight will be M M underscore underscore seven plus M underscore five. Yeah. So what we are saying is that the mass flow coming in from point seven plus the mass flow coming in from point five will give you the mass flow at point eight. So which is the same thing as M underscore, uh, which is the same thing as mass flow underscore F. So again, I can specify this to be kilogram per X. Great. So I think the final parameter we need to find is P1 or the properties at point one. So if at point one, so let's go quickly to point one. So at point one, we know that is another isentropic process. We know that S1 is equal to X9. So the entropy at point one is equal to the entropy at point nine. And also we know that the pressure at point one is the same thing as the pressure at point two, which is a pressure that enters the heat exchanger. So with these two parameters, we know we can use it to find other properties at point one. So let's go there and specify it, that um, S underscore one is equal to S underscore nine. And then we also know that P underscore one is equal to P underscore two. So with these two parameters, we can now find the enthalpy. Again, we should also know that the fluid property will be at liquid phase, although it's subcooled. So now we are looking for H underscore one, which is, so I will copy one of these and then I'll paste it here. So I changed this to H, which is what we're looking for. And then we already know what the entropy is. So which is X one, S underscore one, and then we know the pressure is at them um, liquid, and then we can specify this to be P one. We could do the same for the temperature. We can find the temperature at point one, which is I uh, just copy this quickly and um, paste it. So now we're looking for T. We know the entropy. We know the the and then we can also look for the density, D underscore one, which is equals this D. And then we know that M1, M underscore one is the same as the, as the mass flow underscore F coming in. 
So we could quickly specify our units again. This one here, the units will be joules per kilogram. Sorry, I need to put the comment sign. Joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Repeat the same here. The units will be these. Here, the unit will be Pascal. And here, the units will be Joule per kilogram. And here, the units will be Kelvin. Here, the units will be Kilogram per meter cube. Here, the units will be Kilogram per second. So here again, we, if you want to find out what the temperature is at point, point 0.8, which will be the same thing as a, as a condenser temperature, so just don't need going to look out for that. But if we look for it, we still obtain the same results. Um, so I'll just ignore that. So with this, we now know all our thermodynamic properties for each of these points. We can now go ahead and run the performance calculations for the pump work, for the turbine work, the turbine work, the pump work, the network, the heat impute, and the cycle efficiency. So from here, we said we specify that the turbine work is the mass flow multiplied by the enthalpy difference multiplied by the turbine efficiency. So let's go here and do that. So I call this cycle performance. So if we do the turbine work, Equals. So maybe we just go and copy what we have here and see if it's going to be a lot easier for us. And then we can paste it down here. Yeah. And then we could do the same for the pump. So let's go. We copy this. Let's just copy all this. Paste them here, cut them all as code. Yeah, so for this pump work, which is the same thing as M1, is equal to this. So whichever one we use, we we'll still get the same thing. And um, and that's it. We can now uh, run this simulation to see what result we will get. Again, let's specify the units. So for the turbine work, this will be joule per kilogram. The same for the pump work. This will be joule per kilogram. And for the network, this will be joule per kilogram. As well as the heat impute, this will be joule per kilogram. And this will be a fraction of percent. So this will be fraction of percent so if you want to make it in percent you multiply it by 100 and maybe we just go through to be sure that we didn't miss anything before we run the model so this looks okay this looks okay this looks okay oh this looks okay this also looks okay Oh, this looks okay. This looks okay. This looks okay. And this also looks okay. This looks okay. This also looks okay. And this looks okay. And lovely. So we can now run the model and see what the result gives us. So I click on run. And you see that my cycle successfully ran with a cycle efficiency of 21.49%. So this is how you can 
model the organic flash cycle from scratch. I hope you find this video useful and you now know how to model organic flash cycle. If this video was useful to you, please hit the like button, subscribe and share the video. And if you have any difficulty running any of this model, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And for watching this video to the end, I will also provide this whole model in the description section for free download. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye for now.